Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In the last video tutorial, we tested the add new product functionality where we tried to add a new product, but then we got an error saying that the data table could not be reinitialized. And the reason was that it could not detect any changes. That's because when we added the new product, we did not refresh the page. And if we did not refresh the page, the data tables would not be able to reload the data once again into the data table. Therefore, without refreshing the page, how would we tell data table that we have added a new product in the list, detect the changes and reload the table? To do that, we have to change or modify a code so that data table can trigger the change, detect the change and trigger the loading once again. So what we are going to do now is we are going to go back to our application and try to edit some code so that we can reload the data table. So go to your product list component.ts, scroll all the way to the on submit method which is used to create or add a new product. So, so this is the method that throws the error where when it tries to reinitialize the table, we get an error saying that the table cannot be reinitialized because it did not detect any changes and that's the reason for that. So what we want to do is we will write a custom method here that is going to detect the changes and re-render the table for us. So what it's basically going to do is it's going to after the product is added, a new product is added, it's going to destroy this old table and re-render a new table with the newly added product and we are going to call this method as re-render so we will use it to destroy old table and re-render new table therefore i'm calling it as re-render so now what i want you guys to do is just go up and you will see this property over here which is called as dt element which is of type data table directive we have created this property when we created all these other properties, but we never used it. The reason for creating this property was basically to create a new instance of a table. And the reason why we want to create a new instance of our data table is because we are going to destroy this whole instance and therefore we need to then re-render it with the new instance. So using that DT element, we will call the DT instance. So as you see, the definition says here that it's used to build an instance of the data table. So we are going to call this and then we are going to call a callback function. So the callback function is the then method. So it will attach whatever you want to call back on this instance. So first thing that we want to do is we want to pass our dt instance as a parameter so dt instance so dt instance when we will call this as data tables this is of type data tables dot api so the api is the interface Using the data tables dot API interface, we are creating an object of that type called as DT instance. Now then what we want to do is before we render this new instance that we have created of data tables API, we want to destroy the old table that is existing in the context. So at the current context, this is the old table that is existing. So we need to delete that table first or destroy that table first. To destroy any table in the current context, we will have to call the destroy method on our DT instance. So DT instance dot destroy method will destroy any data tables in the current context. So, so next thing that we want to do is after we have destroyed the current 
context tables we want to re-render the new table so we will call dt instance dot oh sorry to re-render the new table we will use dt trigger so we will use the dt trigger dot next method so that's the method that we are going to use so let's get his here control x and i'm going to call this method inside here so now i have added the comments for you guys to understand why how in sequence we are calling this method so first we destroy it and then we call the trigger to re-render the table now what we want to do is we want to call this re-render method over here so now this re-render method is calling or destroying the old table and re-rendering the new table but so far uh, there's one problem other than re-rendering the table and the problem is the change detection so the table will be re-rendered but will the changes be detected after the new product is added so we are destroying the old table we are re-rendering the new table but what about the changes the changes also need to be detected so we need to tell angular that a new product has been added so detect the changes and automatically reload the table so how do we tell angular to reload or detect the change and reload the table so for angular to keep track of any changes that are happening on the current context we need to instantiate a change detection change detector reference object in our constructor so as soon as this page loads that object is instantiated and it keeps listening for any changes that are taking place in the context so for that we will make use of this new object type which is called as change detector we will call it at chref and this will be of type change detector ref so you see this the class change detector ref so now as soon as this uh, component loads this object also will be instantiated and what this object will do is it will keep listening for any changes that take place so you add a new product is going to listen for that change so now we have to make use of this chref object to see that if that if there are any changes made in this context so now what we want to do is inside after we have created instantiated the object for change detection we have to tell angular to start listening for any changes so as soon as our component loads we need to initialize this change detection object so we will call the chref object that we just created and then we will call the detect for changes method so what this method does is detects for any changes that are happening in the component so we will call this method before we trigger the data table so before we load the components in the data table we will detect for any changes and as soon as we detect any changes then the new changes will be applied before loading the data table so so we will no longer get that initializing error for data tables because the new changes have been detected and they have been applied so the data table will load with the new changes in it the reason why we were getting that error when we were adding the new product is because the data table already loaded whereas the new product details were still being uh, fetched from the database and we could not load it into the data tables so it was not possible to reinitialize the table so now we are telling angular that the new changes have been taken place in the project so please reload the table and it's doing it automatically because it's listening for the changes so now let's refresh this let's try to add a new product macbook air 2025 just to keep simple test product uh, let's thousand dollars and i will add an image url so that's the image url i just added the product name is macbook air 2025 and i'm going to click add 
as you see a new product was added macbook air 2025 the change was detected by angular because it was listening for the changes and what it did was it re-rendered the table it reinitialized the table and the new test product is now we can see it as it's added onto the table so in this way we can fix all the reinitialization errors in our data tables because we are detecting we are listening for any changes that are taking place so old table was destroyed also we want to make sure we call the on destroy method so that when we move away from this component we destroy the old uh, old table so for that what we want to do is go back here and here we have an initialization method to initialize the table with change detection so we will also call the on destroy on destroy interface so on destroy so what happens when on on destroying this when this component is destroyed what's going to happen we know when it's initialized we are going to listen for changes but when it's on destroyed what do we want to do so we have to create an on destroy method if we are using on destroy interface so let's do that all we want to do is we want to unsubscribe from the data table trigger so let's do that so dt trigger dot unsubscribe and by doing this we will destroy the old table as well so, so we make sure you do not forget to unsubscribe so once again when the component loads it reinitializes it restarts listening for any changes so the old changes it will just unsubscribe it so make sure that you use the on destroy and it's a good way of coding is just to just put this on destroy method uh, at the bottom of your of your class so i'm just going to put it at the end usually we call the destroy method at the end it's 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 a good practice to follow but you don't have to do the same thing you can add it anywhere but i will call it at the end the on destroy method so that should be it and now everything should work fine even if we go away from the components and we come back to the components the old uh, components will be destroyed in the table the table will be destroyed because the on destroyed method will be called and when we go back it will be re reinitialized so that's it for this video tutorial so what we have learned here is how we can detect changes in a component and how we can reinitialize our components within this components that we have like the da data table api how we can reinitialize it after detecting change using change detector and if you have any questions please use the comment section so that i can answer them also we have to now work on the edit and delete functionality as well as the details so looks good so far so please like and subscribe my channel if you have any questions use the comment section thank you once again the code is available in dev repos